Hello guys, today we will talk about glomerular filtration, renal blood flow and their control. To start with, glomerular filtration is the first step in your urine formation and it is the filtration of fluid from your glomerulus to your Bowman's capsule. Now, one important fact we need to remember before proceeding is that your glomerular capillaries are impermeable to proteins. Now, let's see what determines your GFR. GFR is determined by two things. The first is the forces that act across our capillary membrane over here. And these include your hydrostatic and osmotic pressures. Together, these will make up our net filtration pressure. And the second determinant is the capillary filtration coefficient. This is the permeability. This is the product of the permeability and surface area of your capillary. So now let's break this down and see how each factor determines GFR. One fact is that the GFR in a healthy human being is 180 liters per day or 125 ml per minute. So together your GFR, we can write it as your net filtration pressure multiplied by your filtration coefficient. First, let's talk about the forces that act across our membrane. See, this is your glomerular capillary this is your bowman's capsule now these forces we will go one by one of uh, and talk about these forces and then divide them into two the ones which promotes filtration and the ones which opposes your filtration let's start the first one is glomerular hydrostatic pressure this is the pressure of fluid inside your capillaries and this will promote your filtration as you can see the arrow right here and the value of this is 60 mmHg. The second one is glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. This is 32 mmHg. And the arrow is in the opposite direction, which shows that it opposes your filtration. Now, let me tell you why. Remember that colloid osmotic pressure is the pressure because of your proteins present in your capillaries. Now, look at this beaker over here. One side, you have a lot of proteins over here and one side, you have a lot of fluid. As we all learn that water always moves from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. So that means it will pull the water towards itself. The same thing happens over here. This colloid osmotic pressure because of the proteins present here will pull the water from the Bowman's capsule and therefore it opposes your filtration. The third one is your Bowman's capsule colloid osmotic pressure. Now, in a healthy human being, uh, proteins do not get filtered. As you can remember this important fact that your glomerular capillaries are impermeable to proteins. Therefore, there will be no proteins in your Bowman's capsule and this value will be zero. The fourth pressure is the Bowman's capsule pressure, which is 18 mmHg. And this pressure also opposes your filtration. Now, to sum up, let's talk about the forces that promote your filtration. The first one is your glomerular hydrostatic pressure and your Bowman's capsule colloid osmotic pressure, which is zero. The ones which oppose your filtration are your glomerular, glomerular colloid pressures, remember, due to the proteins present, and your Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure. So this together will give us our net filtration pressure. This was the first determinant of GFR. Now look at this uh, equation over here. The net filtration pressure is equal to the hydrostatic pressure minus the capsule pressure minus the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure, which gives us a value of 10 mmHg. This is nothing. This is simple subtraction. And with that, you can determine your net filtration pressure. The second determinant, which was your capillary filtration coefficient, your KF. As I told you, it is the permeability and surface area of that capillary. So let's say if your capillary has more permeability, it has more surface area, more amount of fluid can be filtered, right? Therefore, your GFR will increase. So let's see how this is determined. Your KF is your GFR divided by your net filtration pressure. We just found out the net filtration pressure, right? Which was 10 mmHg. And your GFR, as we saw here, what was the value of your GFR? 125 ml per minute. 
that gives out your filtration coefficient to be 12.5. As you can see uh, that this is really very high compared to all the other capillaries in our uh, system. So therefore, the filtration in your glomerular capillaries is high. So these two together determine your GFR. Now, let's talk about some factors that decrease your GFR, that decrease your glomerular filtration rate. Now, first, we'll divide them into two, your forces and your filtration coefficient. Now, if you can remember the forces that oppose your filtration, which was your Bowman's capsule pressure and your glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. Let's think for a minute. If you increase them, they're already opposing your filtration. And if they get increased, therefore your filtration will also uh, decrease, right? So first, your Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure. If that increases, your GFR will decrease. And one condition which causes this is your uh, kidney stones. Your stones, they block your the passage of urine, which therefore leads to a lot of accumulation of fluid. A lot of fluid will get accumulated over here. Therefore, this pressure will increase and cause uh, less fluid to be filtered. And in turn, that will decrease our GFR. Now, the second one was increased glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. Remember, colloid osmotic was because of your proteins. Now, if there is any factor that is increasing that, that will lead to less number of fluid filtered because we know that fluid always goes from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So, two factors which determine your glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is your arterial plasma colloid osmotic pressure and your filtration fraction. Now, if you increase, if the arterial plasma colloid pressure is increased, therefore more proteins are present. More proteins will come in your capillaries, therefore decreasing your GFR. The second one is filtration fraction. This is the amount of fluid that is getting filtered. Now, let's think, if a lot of fluid is getting filtered, that would concentrate the amount of proteins, right? Let's look at this diagram. Now, a lot of water is getting filtered over here. So the amount of proteins here will start to increase. And because of that increase, the colloid pressure will increase and therefore your GFR will decrease. Now, the second determinant, which was filtration coefficient. Let's see how can that affect. As I told you, it is the product of the surface area and it is the product of the permeability. So see, if there are less functional capillaries or if the surface area is less due to some condition or if the thickness of your capillary membrane has increased, there is some kind of deposition that will all decrease your filtration coefficient and in turn decrease your GFR. Now, some examples in which this condition can happen is hypertension and diabetes mellitus. So these factors will decrease your GFR. Just remember, these. the most important thing to remember are these forces and in which direction they act. Do they oppose your filtration or do they promote your filtration? Now, let's talk about a concept known as the effects of afferent and efferent arterial resistance on GFR. Now, before we start this simple anatomy, this is your afferent arteriole. This is your efferent arteriole. This is your glomerular capillary, your Bowman's capsule. Now, what will happen if there is some kind of constriction over here of your efferent arteriole? The resistance here will increase, right? The resistance will increase the blood flow will decrease and because of that the gfr will decrease because not much blood and fluid is passing over here and therefore less amount is getting filtered now let's talk about when there is a constriction in your efferent arteriole this is very important because this is not as simple as your efferent arteriole in efferent arteriole more resistance less gfr but here you have your biphasic effect what do you mean by biphasic? It has two effects. It has a dual role. First one is when there is a moderate constriction and the second one when there is a severe constriction. Now let's see how that works. First, when there is a moderate const constriction over here, 
a lot of fluid will get accumulated here, right? Now we learn that if there is a lot of fluid over here, a lot can pass through. Therefore, that will increase your GFR. But now when there is severe constriction, like not like everything is constricted over here, not even your plasma proteins can pass through. Nothing can pass through. So this causes a lot of proteins to accumulate over here. And the amount of protein that get accumulated increases is more than the hydrostatic pressure. Therefore, we learned before that more proteins over here that will decrease the GFR because it won't allow water to get filtered. Okay, a simple, I'll sum, I'll sum this up in one more way. Moderate constriction will increase your GFR because fluid will get accumulated over here. But a severe constriction will decrease your GFR because the amount of proteins that get accumulated here are far more. Therefore, opposes, therefore it opposes the filtration. So this was the effect of your arterial efferent and efferent arteriole on your GFR. Now let's talk about some physiological control of your glomerular filtration and your renal blood flow. Your renal blood flow is 1100 ml per minute, which is 20% of your cardiac output. Now, all our blood vessels in your renal system, all of them are innervated by your sympathetic nervous system. All your blood vessels, efferent arterioles, efferent arterioles, you name them, they are innervated by your sympathetic nervous system. Now, when this sympathetic nervous system is highly activated, that causes a decrease in GFR. Why? Because all these vessels will constrict. That is the reason more sympathetic stimulation, your GFR will decrease. And this is especially important in traumatic cases. And this helps your body. This is a very helpful mechanism and it only happens during traumatic experiences. Now, the second physiological control is through your hormones. If you look at this table, we'll go one by one and we'll see their effect on GFR. Norepinephrine, it decreases GFR. Why? Because your sympathetic nervous system activates your epinephrine, norepinephrine, therefore increasing your GFR. Now, a substance known as endothelin is present in your capillaries. This is a vasoconstrictor. If the vessels are constricted, the amount of fluid that flows through will decrease. Therefore, decreasing the GFR. Now, the most important one here is angiotensin 2. Why? Because it prevents your GFR to decrease. And let's see how. Angiotensin 2, it has its effect only on the efferent arteriole. Means your angiotensin 2 will only act over here. It will only constrict this part, but not your efferent arteriole. And what is the reason for that? The only reason is that your afferent arteriole has nitric oxide and prostaglandins which are released. And these two are vasodilators. So let's look here. Here you have your prostaglandins and your nitric oxide. These are vasodilators. So the effect of angiotensin 2 is blocked. But in your efferent arteriole, there is nothing. So your angiotensin 2 will work over there and therefore it will cause constriction. So this is one important uh, factor you have to remember. Now, the other two factors, as I said, were endothelial derived nitric oxide and prostaglandins. They will increase your GFR. Why? Because they are vasodilators. When your blood vessel will vasodilate, more amount of fluid will pass through. Therefore, more amount of fluid is present here. And therefore, there will be an increase in your glomerular filtration rate. So these were some of the factors that affect your GFR and what are the determinants of GFR. Thank you.